Hey guys, it's Ray for PandaCanDo.com. This will be the last video for today because I'm running out of light. So if it's a little dim, uh, I apologize. It's it's I'm using natural daylight here in my truck, so um, so that's what I've got. So um, today I wanted to address some big um, uh, hot topic type um, uh, things we hear about in medical. Oh, quick explanation. There's another video that I just did that covers all this stuff. This is my samples. Um, kit where I rip things open and show them to people, all the gauzes and everything. So if you want to see that video or you know, wonder what any of those things in the background are about, you have to watch that, but I don't have time to, um, I didn't have time to clean it up to shoot this one because I'm running out of light. So I want to talk about two big things. Um, one, color coding in latex and nitrile gloves. Um, you will hear very often, which one's better, blue or red? Uh, red. <laughs> getting tired too. Uh, dinner time soon. So, which one's better? Um, are black nitrile gloves superior? Are latex gloves superior? Are the blue ones the the, the best, thickest, most um, shielding ones you gotta have? So, the answer is um, yes and no. Right? It's it's one of those things where um, oh, blue is better because they're thicker. Um, and, and blacks aren't as thick or uh, blacks are better and well it depends on the company because there's no at this time there's no standard um, across you know, there's no standard in the industry there's just each company color codes them the way they want to so some will make their blues thicker some will make their blacks thicker it all depends we carry the black um, right now we don't carry any blues just because um, we sell a lot to the tactical market to the military to the police and that type of thing so they want the tactical black. So that's what we care. And the other thing is we get these from Dynarex and Dynarex sells um, their black is a, a higher, in their case their black is, is thicker um, and gives you more puncture protection and tear protection than their blue because that's Dynarex's color scheme but other companies are, are different and it may be the reverse or they may not even carry a black um, and they make purples and reds and pinks and all kinds of stuff. So, color coding. There's the big myth about color coding. You can't just go by the color. Um, and every company's going to say also that, that they've got the premier, toughest, strongest um, glove uh, for tactical use and all that. Well, you know, they're going to say that. Um, we like these ones. Uh, you get a good, they're not the absolute thickest walled ones. Um, but if you wanted that, you could also go get some kitchen gloves right it'd be thicker uh, you'd have more protection right they don't tear as easy because they're kitchen gloves um, you can also get Kevlar uh, gloves and just wear your tactical Kevlar gloves but you may you need dexterity for medical use if you're working on somebody you need your fingers to be able to move so then kitchen gloves don't become so great and neither do your tactical gloves uh, or your um, your mittens or your leather gloves that are great at puncture protection um, so we go with the Dynarex. They are thicker than, than the average exam glove, so you do get some extra protection. They are tactical black. Um, they are nitrile, um, and they still have quite a bit of um, uh, dexterity left in them. So, so that's, uh, that's what we go with for a tackle marker. We don't carry a blue right now, um, but I just had this one, um, and I wanted to point out that um, it is thinner, so it doesn't have the same puncture and tear uh, resistance as the black one. Um, but it has more dexterity. So if you're going to do surgery, you're going to want more dexterity. And that brings me to my other topic, which I'm going to be covering, which is um, latex. You will hear numerous people uh, saying, and I've had people write into me and ask this question plenty, um, and warn me about this, and, and, and yeah, yeah, just question about it. Um, and you see it all over the everywhere. Is sterile or um, latex is is bad. It's evil. It's people are allergic to it. If you use that on somebody, they're gonna die. That's not really the case. Um, these people who say that aren't wrong. They have some of the information. There are people who are allergic to the protein in natural latex, um, and nitrile is a synthetic uh, rubber, a synthetic latex, because latex is rubber basically from the rubber tree. Um, nitrile is um, like the black ones there are synthetic, so you don't get the um, protein, but people, surprisingly, not surprisingly really, um, 
were still having reactions, and some still do, to the to the black. Um, and the reason behind this is there's a lot of um, allergens, right? So some people were allergic to the protein in the latex that wasn't in the nitrile. Other people were allergic to the chemicals that are used to make the gloves. So depending on the manufacturer, depending on the line of gloves, they were having a reaction to the chemicals that were being used. So now they're starting to make more um, gloves that are not only low in these chemicals that people are allergic to, but also low in, in latex protein. So they even make latex gloves that are low in the natural protein. Um, and you may ask, well, why are they using latex at all uh, still? And a lot of people will say, well, they're not. They're phasing them all out. They're, they're, they're not available. I've seen people say um, uh, their hospital doesn't even carry them anymore. And that might be true. Some hospitals may have reacted that way. Um, but the truth, the thing with latex is it is more flexible. Um, it's, it gives you, again, um, it gives you more of that tactile um, dexterity. So if you're doing surgery, here's the big thing. Surgeons use sterile. This is a sterile pack, uh, one that we just got in and are now carrying for our surgery kits. They use a sterile latex. They don't use nitrile. I mean, unless the surgeon himself is allergic to latex um, or the patient they know is allergic to latex, which is unlikely, they're going to use um, they're going to use latex, not not nitrile, uh, because you get more dexterity, um, and uh, so they're not discontinuing latex. It's not going away. The other thing about the allergy is people aren't going to go into anaphylactic shock if you touch them with this and they're allergic. If you touch their arm, if you put a bandage on them and, and your thumb accidentally touches them or or you get full contact, even rub against them, they're not just going to go into anaphylactic and die. It's a mild allergic reaction. Um, most people are not going to have a major uh, reaction like that. There may be a couple um, out there, a few people that have a severe allergy to it, but for the most part, it's a mild one, you know. Um, and the other thing is, like most allergens, they are a lot of people develop their allergy from exposure to something. So perfumes, people aren't. Um, most people aren't allergic to a perfume, but if they sell it for a living, like a lot of Avon salespeople back in the day would develop allergies to the things that were in the perfumes and then couldn't be around perfumes anymore. Same with the latex. People in the medical industry are constantly exposed to the protein, and that's they eventually, their body rejects it. Um, it's exposed to it so much, eventually it, it diver, uh, develops an antibody to it, and it basically, um, and it... Um, rejects it and then it reacts to it whenever it is exposed to it. But again, you're looking more at like a rash. You know, they would put the gloves on every day, a nurse or a doctor, and they would have irritated skin. Uh, they didn't drop dead. So I just wanted to cover that real quick because latex is here to stay for quite a while, maybe forever, because of, they're getting so they can just pull the protein out of it anyway. So then if there's no natural protein left in it, it's still latex, so don't fear the latex, and don't necessarily fear the protein because the person may not be allergic to that. They may be allergic to the chemicals used to make the glove, to soften the rubber, and there's plenty of people in the medical industry that are allergic to um, to the powder that they put on it. These are powdered gloves for surgeons. Some surgeons wouldn't like these because they have a little bit of the powder on them, and the powder um, irritates uh, some people. They, again, they get a rash. They don't uh, they don't drop dead from the uh, from the powder. I'm really getting losing light here, so I'll have to hurry. So, very um, flexible, uh, very rip resistant, um, and great, uh, I'll put this on real quick, great dexterity. Um, and these are your sterile. Sterile, um, uh, this is what a surgeon would use in an operating room because um, they are sterile. They can don these sterile. You can see the cuffs are folded up, the paper unfolds, and lets you pick them up without, without touching the outside and pull them on. And pull the other one on, um, and you've got your your sterile setup. So you'll see these in our in our uh, field um, surgery kits. You won't see a lot of other people including these. Um, one reason is they're very expensive, you know, because it's got to be all be sterilized. It's got to have this extra paper. You know, it's got to have all that extra work put into making them. But great thing to have. Very cool. Um, so that's just a quick uh, thing about uh, covering color coding myths and. Latex allergies are, are going to kill everybody myths. Um, 
But stay alert, guys. Um, let me know if you disagree or agree or have some more information on this. Um, let me know if you have any questions about the products. And thank you guys for all the support. You guys rock. See you tomorrow. I'm going to go eat dinner and go to sleep.